In this screencast video lecture, we will try to understand about the glycolysis, mainly from the microbiological point of view. Since glycolysis is a topic that have been taught there in the other subjects also, especially in the biochemistry also you can able to see the topic of glycolysis. Whereas here we are going to see what is its significance there in the microbial system. The other name for glycolysis is Emden Mayer of Paranos pathway and it is also referred as fructose bisphosphate aldolase pathway. Here the total glycolysis step could be divided into three parts. The first one is called as a stage one which refers to the preparatory reaction that is mainly how the sugar is phosphorylated there inside the system. And the second step is mainly related to the oxidative dehydrogenation of the molecules there. And finally, it comprises of the stage 3 that is reduction which involves the main process of fermentation mainly to ensure the recycling of NAD. Before going detail into this particular process, we need to understand certain basics say under what condition it happens. Glycolysis could be present or operative in the presence of oxygen or in the absence of oxygen also. And it mainly operates there in the cytoplasm of the cell. Here the enzymes involved in this particular pathway can be broadly grouped based on their suffixes that have been shown there. Say kinase refers to enzyme that affects the phosphorylation reactions. Whereas if an enzyme ends with the isomerase, it catalyzes isomerization reaction that is changes in the functional groups of the molecules. If it is an often aldolase or enolase mainly mediates a reversible reactions there inside the cell. If it is basically of a dehydrogenase, it is involved in removal of hydrogen atom from the substrate and transfers the same to the acceptor molecule. It may be of other than oxygen molecule. Here, in this particular glycolysis process, mainly it operates to synthesize two things. One is formation of energy in the form of ATP and another one is formation of reducing equivalence that is NADH2. Here the energy production that is ATP manufacturing will be taking place at a substrate level. So it is technically referred as a substrate level phosphorylation. You may already aware that there are other two phosphorylation that is photophosphorylation and oxidative phosphorylations are also existing there in the living systems. The substrate for this cycle is actually glucose. It finally ends in the production of pyruvic acid which can be channeled there into fermentation process or pyruvic acid can be further converted into acetyl CoA and a TCA cycle will be operating. After that, whatever reduced equivalence that is NADH2 that have been synthesized there in the glycolysis as well as in the TCA cycle are all will be channeled there into the electron transport chain in order to produce the ATP. So that is referred as an oxidative phosphorylation. When you look at the overall process of this glycolysis pathway, it may be looking little complex there for you. If you feel like that, you can even go and study about the glycolysis from even the biochemistry or from any other contents also. That is also a similar one. And the glycolysis process that have been operating there in the bacterial system is the one which is similar there in other eukaryotic organism, including fungi, plant system or even in the human system, the same process could be operating. Here, the enzymes that have been involved in this pathway have been shown there in the underlining. Whereas the enzymes that are involved in again the manufacturing of the glucose that is referred as a gluconeogenesis process. Those enzymes have been shown there in a red color rectangular boxes. Next we try to look at in a still more explanatory manner on the various stages of the glycolysis process. If you look at into the first stage that is the preparatory reaction phosphorylation. Which one is phosphorylated? It is the sugar that is getting phosphorylated say. Glucose is converted to glucose 6 phosphate that is a phosphorylation. Again, the next step, glucose is converted to fructose 6 phosphate that is by isomerase enzyme that is phosphoisomerase. In the subsequent step, again, a phosphorylation is effected with the help of a phosphofructokinase enzyme. This finally results in the addition of 2 phosphate molecule and 
isomerizing glucose into fructose molecule preparing it for the glycolysis process. Here if you look at in the left hand side you can able to see two enzymes that have been shown there in a rectangular box which indicates those enzymes are involved there in the gluconeogenesis process. Next we look at the steps that are involved in the second stage that is oxidative dehydrogenation process. Here fructose 1,6 bisphosphate is converted to glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate which can be further converted to dihydroxyacetone phosphate with the help of the isomerase enzyme. Then the glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate is the one which donates the electron which has been passed on to the further molecules that is 1,3 bisphosphoglycerate and 3 phosphoglycerate, phosphoenol pyruvate and finally to pyruvic acid. If you look at here, in this operation of the steps, you can able to see two things. One is synthesis of the reducing equivalent there, that is NAD is converted to NADH2. And the other one, that is phosphorylation of the ADP molecule, that is two molecule of ADP is getting phosphorylated there into ATP. This type of a phosphorylation that actually takes place there at a substrate level are referred as a substrate level phosphorylation process. And finally, 3 phosphoglycerate is converted to phosphoenol pyruvate. And from that, if you look at, you can again able to see some amount of ATP has been synthesized involving the enzyme pyruvate kinase. Since a huge amount of energy has been loaded there inside the phosphoenol pyruvate molecule. So that will be conserved there again as an ATP molecule employing substrate level phosphorylation process. At the end of this particular second stage of the oxidative dehydrogenation, pyruvic acid molecule will be resulted. This pyruvic acid can be further channeled there into citric acid cycle or this pyruvic acid can be further moving there into the third stage that is reduction stage which mainly comprises of various kind of fermentation process. So here in the fermentation different kinds of reduced products have been synthesized. Say for example, you can able to see lot of a neutral product, acidic products such as a formate, acetate, lactate and even various kinds of alcohol such as ethanol, butanidiol, butanol, isopropanol. These are all the various kinds of reduced products that have been manufactured during the operation of the fermentation process. Based on the fermented products that have been formed during the reduction process they can be referred as a mixed acid fermenters or it is of a pH neutral product such as a butanidiol they are referred as a butanidiol fermenters. The main role of this fermentation process that is the third stage there in the glycolysis is mainly to recycle the NAD. If you look at here in every step you can able to see the NADH has been oxidized and, and it is converted into NAD. So the NAD that have been formed here are all will be finally recycled there into the cell system. The reason is NAD is an important coenzyme that have been present there in the cell system in a very minute quantities. So they need to be constantly recycled in order to stably perform the glycolysis or for the continuous operation of the glycolysis process.